today we will talk about the part 3 of approaches to software development in this section we will consider the modeling in software development specifically the importance of modeling and uh, we will propose a popular software development process and introduce the software development process with the activities and artifacts in the development process let's start with the first topic that is modeling in software development so what is the importance of modeling modeling is a way of thinking about things and ideas in the real world so basically a model is an abstract representation of a situation in reality or of a system from a particular point of view so in terms of the development of the software systems models are a way of understanding the problems involved an aid to communication between the developer and the user and third a component of the processes used in development activities such as analysis and design we will talk about the analysis model and design model in later sections if we will talk about agile modeling then agile modeling is scott ambler's approach to lighter modeling it proposes a set of values principles and practices to help software developers become agile modelers. So these are mostly common sense, but reinforce the alignment of modeling with an agile approach. A typical activity of an agile modeler is to stand up with others in front of a whiteboard, sketch a few models, discuss these sketches, and then discard them if they serve no further need. So in this module, you will learn about different modeling techniques and how to use them. You will practice by applying them to a case study in a systematic way. So in developing a software system, a developer will not use a single catch-all model. A set of related models is more likely. It would be preferable to have a consistent way of representing each of the different models for a given software system. So a modeling language will be used that allows the developer to make useful connections between those different models. In software development, a modeling language is often based on diagrams and their construction, meaning and use. So there are two sets of rules within a diagram based modeling language. First one is syntax. It determines what diagrams exist and what symbols are used on each one. And second is semantics that determines what the diagrams and symbols mean. So what you should look for when choosing a modeling language. So you should favor a modeling language that allows you to express the many facets of the subject of your model, helps you to resolve misunderstandings rather than introducing new ones, is easy to learn and use, you want to make progress quickly. So it also must be supported by tools that allow you to use your modeling skills rather than your drawing skills or mo the modeling language should be widely used and is accepted within the industry so it is advantageous if a modeling language is widely used one of them is uml unified modeling language it is now accepted as the standard object oriented modeling language it is intended to be a general purpose language for software development it is not meant to be a complete language for modeling all aspects of all systems. Its success is partly due to its separation from any particular model method. It is available for anyone to include in their own method for software development. Then Object Management Group, OMG. It is an industry consortium for modeling and integration standards. It has adopted UML and is the main body responsible for its development. The UML is predominantly diagrammatic but does allow developers to add text at, in the diagrams at appropriate places. So if we will uh, talk about uh, the model's illustrations that to understand the architecture of a software system, you will need a number of complementary and related views. So if, in, if the main influence is the users, a view that expresses their requirements is essential. So 
you must be interested in different aspects or views of the problem and its solution at different times. It follows that you will construct different models to suit those aspects. So it is unrealistic to expect to put everything into just one model. Too much detail in a model can only be a distraction. So when it comes to the development of an object-oriented software system, there are two distinct kinds of models, structural models and behavioral models. Structural or static models describe the objects in the real world or in a software system and their relationship to other objects. Behavior, behavior or behavioral or dynamic models describe the behavior in the real world or of a software system over time. So uh, in the next, um, uh, with the activities and artifacts, we will discuss more about these models in detail. Let's talk about unified process. The unified process UP has emerged as a popular iterative and incremental development process for building enterprise systems. It is based on an object oriented approach and it used UML. It promotes a set of best practices, namely that development should be organized in short time box iterations and that it should be adaptive to accommodate inevitable change. So a commercial version of the unified process uh, is known as rational unified process. It is most well known implementation or although there are many others around. If we will talk about time boxing, so time boxing means that uh, short fixed period, for example, three to four weeks. So it is devoted to each iteration. If you can see from this diagram, we have these time boxed iterations for each uh, of these activities and stages of the UP process. So at each iteration only a small set of F requirements is considered and progressed to the implementation and testing stage. Each iteration results in a working but possibly not yet complete system. It normally delivers an increment of the functionality on the previous incomplete system. Typically many iterations progressively integration of increments are required before the product can be delivered. Here if I am saying that UP is adaptive, being adaptive means that adjustments are allowed at each iteration. The motivation for this is the recognition that requirements may change throughout development and that such changes should be welcome rather than resisted. By involving customers and users at each iteration, feedback can be gained quickly and the required adjustments made within the next iteration. So each iteration may provide an increment over the previous one or simply revisit is its output. We have also some best practices promoted by unified process. These are dealing with high risk issues in early iterations. Second one, prioritizing the user's perspective by involving users in requirements, evaluation and feedback. Third best practice, building a view of the system's architecture in early iterations. So here, if you can see, the unified process is organized into four major phases, inception, elaboration, construction, and transition. In inception, the business case is developed together with an idea of the scope of the system. If you can see here, and a rough estimate of the effort required. In elaboration phase, the core of the system is developed in an iterative fashion. In this phase, all major risks are addressed and resolved. Most of the requirements are identified. As you can see from this bigger curve, most of the requirements are identified and dealt during this time and a more realistic estimate of the effort required is made. Construction phase, during the construction phase, 
the final product is constructed a lot of work has been done during implementation activity so implementation activity has been performed a lot during the construction phase include the remaining lower risk and easier elements of the system again everything is being done in an iterative fashion during the fourth phase of unified process this includes beta testing and deploying the system so here deployment has been done during this phase project management some task has been done during this phase and testing has been done so within the unified process phases development or work is organized within many disciplines so these activities are basically known as disciplines so they are using this terminology the unified process term for development activities such as requirements analysis design and testing most of the domain modeling or business modeling in the unified process occurs in the early iterations of the inception and elaboration phases while most of the implementation occurs within the construction phase so this is how you can understand this uh, phases of the unified process the unified process was developed by the same people who originally specified the uml and uml is its modeling language so a uh, systems architecture includes models that address five different views so we have logical view deployment view use case view process view implementation view in the unified process use case view contains basic scenarios that describe the users and the tasks that they need to perform with the help of a software system these scenarios are partitioned into use cases we will learn them in later sections the logical view is concerned with the functional requirements of the software system what should the software do for its intended users it involves the construction models that represents the main elements of a system and how they interact we will uh, discuss these models in later sections as well the implementation view is concerned with the organization of the code modules that comprise a software system it addresses the management of source code data files and executables the deployment view is concerned with the relationship between the various executables and other runtime components and their intended computer systems process view is concerned with aspects of concurrency what are the processes and threads how do they interact it i deals with such things as response time deadlock and fault tolerance concurrency is outside the scope of this module let's talk about the last topic of this section activities and artifacts in the development process so our core activities that follow the unified process disciplines our domain modeling requirements analysis design implementation testing and deployment domain modeling what already exist in the domain requirements during this discipline it, it includes identification categorization prioritization and modeling of the requirements and as during analysis Uh, you, uh the core activity during this core activity it is modeled how the structure and behavior of the system will meet its users uh, requirements here we will move from the domain to a software solution during design decided on the distribution of responsibilities to fulfill that specifications that has been modeled in the analysis phase during implementation code is produced that will meet the user requirements testing ensures that the software does meet its requirements deployment is all about configuration of the code to give a runnable system so now uh, we will talk about these activities with respect to their artifacts one by one artifacts are the deliverables okay let's start with the 
domain modeling. So this is uh, our starting point to document and model the structure and processes of the organization's business. So starting from some description of the problem, the initial problem statement, you will learn how to identify elements of the real world and their properties and build corresponding structural and dynamic models. The emphasis at this stage is on understanding the current domain situation. So the behavior model uh, is being represented by the activity diagram in this uh, picture and it provides descriptions of business processes and behavioral aspects of the domain. Business rules are used to express constraints on the dynamic model. For example, uh, a behavioral model describing aspects of a library, there might be a business rule that there is a limit on the number of books an individual member can borrow. A structural domain model also called the conceptual model. It describes the significant concepts in the domain and how they are related. A glossary of relevant terms and definitions is also produced. This textual document grows throughout the duration of the project. Then requirements, the next step is to gather and document the requirements for your system and to model what the system is intended to do. Requirements are the expression of the things the system must do or the qualities the system must have in order to meet the stakeholders needs. Starting from some description of the problem, you will learn how to systematically record requirements information. You will also use the Volray template. It provides a disciplined way of recording requirements. And we can model requirements at various levels of details using use case model. Use cases elaborated as text and the detailed software requirements starting what the system should do. So you can write them in terms of functional and non-functional software requirements in, by using any template. During analysis, with both use cases and software requirements, you start looking at a system to be implemented and build both structural and the behavioral models. The structural model evolves from that of the domain. It no longer represents concepts from the domain, but rather entities in the solution domain. This is usually called the analysis model. Use cases and software requirements lead to the specification what is expected from the system from the user's perspective. So system operations show how this behavior can be carried out by the entities chosen. It is at this stage also the architectural decisions are taken in terms of the overall structure of the system. Then we have design. During design, your goal will be to decide how the expected functionality is to be allocated to each part of the system. You need to make choices about which classes the system operations should be allocated to. These decisions can be explored and documented using further behavioral models. UML uses interaction diagrams. Those are sequence diagrams or end communication diagrams. They can be used to show a set of classes and the messages between them. So during design, both structural and behavioral models are elaborated. And uh, these behavioral models are used for both external and internal behavior of objects. The implementation model is not given here, but that is a description of the assembled components that comprise the working version of the software. It describes how classes are packaged together and shows some of the relationships between such packages of classes 
these relationships are modeled using a component diagram and the model is called component model after implementation that needs to be tested against its requirements to ensure that it meets them so tests will be drawn up based on the requirements and held in a test document the tests can be drawn up as soon as you know the requirements then deployment the last activity of uh, the software development that is following the unified process disciplines many significant computer systems will consist of a variety of software components Lo those are located on a number of machines communicating in via variety of hardware and software mechanisms so our deployment model records how various components are to be mapped onto different machines and how they will communicate it will be represented using a deployment diagram and the model is called deployment model so this is all thank you very much